one of the most beautiful um, painters that we study uh, in terms of like making just these lovely, beautiful, serene images is Vermeer. And this is the piece in our curriculum called Woman Holding a Balance. So context wise, uh, we are in the Baroque era and we are in Holland and it is important to know what country you're in because Baroque art changes according to geographic location. So when you're in Italy, a very Catholic country, the art's going to be looking a particular way, mostly religious in a counter-reformation, but a country like Holland that is Protestant, you're gonna see less overt and obvious religious images and you're gonna see more um, portraits or genre scenes like this one or landscapes. And it doesn't mean that the images might not have some religious element to it, but the religious element will be subtle. And that's definitely what we have here. And I'll be talking about that in content. Um, Protestants value a life of moderation, nothing to excess, especially the uh, accumulation of like materialistic possessions. And again, that's what I'm going to be talking about with the symbolism within the image here as well. Uh, so that's one of the main areas of uh, context. And, you know, is, is knowing that Holland is Protestant and, and that's going to change the focus on what type of image you're seeing. And it's also going to affect the patron. And in fact, Holland is a trading country and you know very much on the water and so you have lots of merchants and uh, doing well and becoming art patrons themselves because they can afford art so that also describes why you might have a uptick in portraits landscapes you know paintings with subjects that people would put in their homes so those two things, the Protestantism of it and the also the change in art patron to being like more of an upper middle class merchant patron who want things beyond just religious images. And then the other thing that is actually somewhat controversial here with uh, Johannes Vermeer is the use of a camera obscura, which I should have highlighted for you, but it definitely is a vocab term. So be sure to highlight that on your notes. And it is an optical device, and it really does predate and lead to um, the camera uh, and photography. But at this time, and I put a picture of it in the lower left-hand corner, it is a box that would have a mirror and a opening in the front where the image would project out from the mirror. So the artist you can see is drawing an image and has an image that he's putting on the top of the box. It reflects off of the mirror and is projected out in the front onto like some paper. It's usually, you know, it's projected in an inverse way, but it's bigger. So what the artist can do then is draw the image small but then it's projected on a wall or a piece of paper in a larger form and you can trace the image. So some claim that it, it takes away a little bit of the artist's accomplishment because he or she is not creating the drawing in large scale on his own, that he's using this crutch, you know, this device that is, I don't know, uh, uh, it is a helpful aid, but again, some critics kind of see it as a reason to maybe not admire a Vermeer as much as some do. In fact, Vermeer is one of the most um, celebrated artists, but there is a small group of people who claim that this use of the camera obscura kind of takes away a little bit from his reputation. So those are our main pieces, basically, of of context. So content wise, it's a pretty straightforward painting, but the symbolism of what's going on is I think, where we'll spend a little bit of time. So first of all, you have a woman who is dressed very nicely, fur lined coat and that. 
Uh, she's standing in front of a table that is located in front of a window. And this is typical Vermeer. You'll often see a genre scene. So like a scene of everyday life, which is what this is. And someone doing something very everyday, but it is treated as though the activity is sacred or holy. And so the light that usually is coming through a window in a Vermeer, the light's coming through, it's very soft, it's very natural, and it bathes the person in the light in, in again, a very sacred and holy way. So she's there with the light coming through the window and she's holding a scale. Now that should trigger in our heads um, images that we've done in the past where scales have been seen, specifically the Last Judgment of Hunifer, where you know, a feather is weighted against the you know, individual who had passed away. And you know, what if, you know, is the feather heavier or the heart? And that would determine if you go to the afterlife. Um, you often have scales and tympanums in the Romanesque era where souls would be weighed. So here, the scale doesn't have anything on it. It's a completely balanced scale. Um, and it really does suggest the, a life of balance and moderation and that you should balance, you shouldn't be in anything in excess, especially like materialism and earthly temptations, that you should balance out those things with a, with a spiritual pursuit. And that spiritual element is subtly referenced, which again, typical of Protestant Holland art. The painting behind her is of Christ in the Last Judgment. So judgment here is definitely um, part of the content, but it's done in a, you know, it's not knocking you over the head with it. It's not the main focus, like the Last Judgment in St. Foy or the Last Judgment in Michelangelo's painting in the Sistine Chapel. This is very subtle reminder of uh, judgment and that Protestants did believe that when you died, a Christian would be judged. So it relates to an individual worshiper. Perhaps she is here contemplating her sins and that you need to live a balanced, moderate life and not overindulge in the fine you know, things with like greed and whatnot. So her jewelry is out on the table, I think, as a symbol of that. Yes, have some of these things, but don't go overboard with it in pursuit of greed and you know, accumulating things. Um, you know, there are some nice fabrics on the table. If you notice in, in the painting too, the blues and yellows, and these soft blues and yellows are, uh, you know, seen throughout. That's definitely something with Vermeer also. He uh, does typically focus in on the colors of blues and yellows. That seems to be his color palette of choice. Uh, in terms of function, I would say it has a subtle religious function. I think it has a genre scene function. And, um, you know, again, definitely religions. Don't forget that because people should be concerned with the treasures of heaven rather than those simply on earth. Live a balanced life. Reject all the temptations on earth in order to be judged well in the afterlife. Now, formal quality, um, you could do emphasis. So we're emphasizing her face and her actions with the light. Uh, it's a soft, sacred light, and so it is emphasizing her thoughtfulness, her meditation on life and what is important on sin, on judgment. Um, I think the line, almost you have like a diagonal line of light coming through and shining on the woman to emphasize her and her actions. And then one thing I, I forgot to say, but we definitely have to cover it, and it's a good thing to end with, with Vermeer. In a Vermeer painting, the viewer is always like a spy or what we call a voyeur looking in on the scene. 
And a voyeur is someone who watches another without that person knowing that he or she is being watched. So yes, it's a bit creepy, but that's, you know, this woman shows no acknowledgement of the viewer. She's not looking at us. She's not really addressing a viewer at all. It's as if we aren't even there, but we are. So it's like you're spying to someone who is doing something incredibly intimate and private and every day and we get the opportunity to see and learn from it as a voyeur so i would say vermeer is a voyeur so that v and v kind of ties in nicely not as nicely as titian viz venetian but still nicely all the same so um, here are some just to end with the beauty of vermeer pieces and you can see in three of them that there's a very similar composition of person standing by a window, doing everyday activities, blue and yellow, holy light, you know, the whole thing, usually an interior of a traditionally merchant, like upper middle class-ish home, domestic space. And again, uh, we're, we're peeking in as a voyeur would without the person knowing they're being watched. So, and then on the lower left, you have the very famous girl with a pearl earring uh, by Vermeer. So I needed to show you that. And again, some of the other three here, probably not girl with a pearl earring, but the other three could possibly be attribution uh, essays for a Vermeer. So again, that is Woman Holding a Balance by Johannes Vermeer, a Baroque Holland art piece.